Hello and welcome back. We have breaking tool news. We've got new information about the Cobalt 24 volt max job site radio. Yes, you heard that right. A job site radio for the Cobalt 24 volt line is forthcoming and we have all the details. So stay tuned. So here we go. Here's the radio. You can see we've got a nice front here. It's got that cobalt blue collar. We've got a display screen. And we know even more about this. So some of the key features that we have to talk about today. First of all, we've got the model number here. Kilo Juliet Romeo 124 Bravo 03 is the model number. This can be powered by a cobalt 24 volt battery or by an AC wall adapter. It also features Bluetooth connectivity. And from what I can tell, the price will be about $119, which I think is a pretty decent price for this radio. And so if you want to learn more, keep going because I've got all the details on the inside and out. All right, so let's take a look here. So here's a photo of the radio uh, going through some FCC tests. And we can see at the top, we've got the fold down antenna. We've got some carry handles on either side. Plastic cover still on the LCD display screen there. We've got the battery and we've got the power adapter. So the first big observation here is that power adapter is not what I would prefer it to be, that we've got a wall wart style power adapter that converts uh, AC to DC at the wall rather than having that built into the radio. To me, the big downside of this is that it makes it harder to be able to store the cord and wrap it around. If the 110 volt conversion was done inside the radio, then it'd be far easier to just have a regular cord and wrap it around the unit. If you look at those handles, that's easily perfect for wrapping a cord around. But obviously, if you're going to go uh, cordless and put in your battery, then you don't need the cord to begin with. Looking at it again here from the side, you can see there's the handles and there's a little bit of space that sits off the ground. And it looks like those ends are supposed to be kind of like a roll cage, if you will, for this design to protect the speakers from bumping up against anything else on the job site in your garage or any place else you want to take this. But there's still plenty of interesting little tricks and features here hidden away on the radio. So let's dig a little deeper. Looking on the back side here, you can see there's our battery port there. Slide the battery in. Uh, then on the left side, you see a spot for two AAA batteries. This I thought was really clever. That instead of having a 2032 button cell type battery to be able to retain the memories, it actually uses normal battery sizes that you can easily get at Walmart or any place else and remember what the battery size is. And that they're just two AAA batteries. So kudos on them for coming up with something clever there for the backup batteries. All right, here's a close-up of the main control panel, if you will. We can see we've got a power button, a clock button, equalizer button, up and down, play, pause, forward, back, and some mode changes there. Uh, here on the back, you can see at the very top, there's a dust port seal over the connection for where you plug in that AC power adapter. Here's another close-up of that AAA battery spot for those backup batteries. You know, it's just these little things like this that get me excited. I know this isn't a big feature, but I think this is just a really nice touch. Although in this picture here, you can see there's a little chip in the plastic. I'm not sure if that's from the mold or what caused that. A little concerning about the build quality on this test unit here, but whatever. Uh, we'll go with it. Hopefully the finished product will look better than this. And now you can see that if you take the sides off of the radio... Uh, which you can do. Now you've got a smaller unit, just obviously without the carry handles. And then you can continue taking the grills off. And if we look at this here, you can see there's uh, two larger speakers, two smaller speakers. I've got specs on those coming up later. And then you got those other two grills on the right side there that are off the back that are covering uh, some basic uh, hole opening ports to try to get that full range of sound out of this unit. And so here you go, if you t now split the unit apart in half, you can see there's those four speakers there on the side. And if you look towards the middle, you can see where there's some empty ports going through uh, that would be going out the rear to be able to have the 
Uh, I believe that would be for the bass. I'm not a big sound expert to understand exactly what that would be, but hopefully provides a nice stereo acoustic experience. Now, a little close up of the boards here, you can see on the right, there's the main display board, and then you got the little buttons around it. Then on the left is the other main board with this unit. And you'll notice there's a few more details with that. I'll point that out here a little more in a moment. Turn the boards over. You can see these are connected by some basic ribbon cables. Really easy to connect. It looks like this would be relatively easy to be able to get in and change out some of these parts if needed. And so now if we look at this main processing board, if you will, I'm not sure if that's the right term for it, but we've got a three and a half millimeter aux input. We've got a USB power adapt port and a USB-C power port. So I'm glad to see them supporting the US, the legacy USB-A as well as USB-C. Now, a couple quick caveats. What this does not do, apparently, is you cannot take a USB flash drive with MP3s on it and play it through the radio or something like that. I know there's some Volvo cars out there that you can plug in a flash drive full of music and play it out the radio, but that's not the case here. These are just charging ports. So if you need to charge a cell phone or something else from the radio, uh, you can do that. Looking on the other board here, we can see a little bit more about the Bluetooth. We was able to figure out the exact exact chip on here, and it's compatible with various modes here uh, for audio visual control, uh, stereo playback, and so forth. And so it is Bluetooth 5.0 compatible. Uh, looking on the back side here, here's what the label is going to look like on the back side and where that label is going to go. And by back side, I really mean basically the bottom side of the radio. Uh, a little bit precarious to see it there, but eh, it'll be fine. Uh, other item of note here is the large gap around the battery that this is supposed to support all sizes of the 24 volt battery. So kudos on cobalt. And going through the testing process here in the regulatory acceptance, uh, it's interesting here. You can see what it looks like it being tested with a six amp hour battery. Cobalt logo clearly visible there. Uh, even though the side, the 24 volt uh, side panels look like they're on upside down. So I think it's a little curious. And you can see the testing lab facility, some antennas in the background that any radio device like this in the U.S. has to go through rigorous FCC testing. And that's what this is a photo of here. And indeed, we know that the Cobalt 24 volt job site radio passed the FCC regulatory compliance testing on August 20th of 2021 with the result of pass from a Chinese testing lab. I've went ahead and blanked out the signatures of the people that signed this here just for their privacy. So now let's dig into the user manual. The user manual is uh, bilingual English and Spanish. Spanish starts on page 17. So just a few basic specs here. Uh, it has an IP64 uh, ingress protection rating uh, that's only valid if the USB aux ports uh, are covered. Um, and there we go. The woofers are 30 watts and the tweeters are 20 watts uh, of power for the radio. Uh, and this also confirms Bluetooth 5.0 with a range of up to about 150 feet. Uh, USB power output. Uh, this is not going to be a a modern high-speed port, but we still get 2.1 amps, better than the original legacy ports. We get 5 volts, so good on that. Operating temperature from uh, 41 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. I find that to be just a little bit odd, but I think a lot of this has more to deal with uh, charging temperatures. If you have other batteries going on, that really is an issue with that uh, more so than anything. I'm not really sure why the radio stuff wouldn't work uh, if you were... Uh, below 41 degrees, as many job sites often start to get in the fall every year. Um, I personally don't expect that to be a lower limit. If it is, I'm going to be very surprised. Obviously, battery performance at colder temperatures varies, so maybe there's some wiggle room here for where they're trying to position some of this language. Uh, now for what comes in the box. A couple things that stand out here. Obviously, there's the radio, and then it looks like the power adapter an aux input cable, as well as a set of AAA backup batteries, item V, uh, on the radio. And then now for the power source for the battery, this is compatible with the 1.5 amp hour battery, the 2 amp hour battery, the 4 amp hour battery, the 5 amp hour battery, the 6 amp hour battery, 
the XTR Ultimate Output 4 amp hour battery and the Ultimate Output 8 amp hour battery, as well as a handful of different chargers. So there's the one port charger, the two port charger, the one port fast charger, and the four port charger. Incidentally, that two port charger you can only really get, as far as I'm aware right now, if you buy the two times 24 volt lawnmower, but obviously still compatible with this. Uh, which leads me to my next point here on this AC adapter. I've got the circled in red that the battery pack cannot be charged using the power adapter. So the way I interpret this is that this is not actually a charger, unfortunately, which I find to be a very disappointing detail on this radio. Now, there's plenty of room, as we saw earlier, looking at the innards of this, that they easily could have thrown a charging board on there. Or I think it'd be pretty slick if there would be a way that uh, taking one of those extra basic chargers that we've got laying around. Let's face it, we've all got extra cobalt chargers laying around if you're in the cobalt lineup. And we'll put some of that charging circuitry in the, in the radio would have been great. Unfortunately, they apparently didn't do that on this. Um, and then here we can see this is just another confirmation that the USB ports on the front are for charging only uh, and cannot be used for playback audio support. Um, and you can only do that via Bluetooth or the aux in, or obviously direct through the radio. Uh, a couple other details here. This is actually fun and surprising is the Bluetooth on here can both receive from a phone, but it can apparently also transmit Bluetooth. This is suggesting that if you were to buy two of these, you could have a stereo pair put together. I would be very curious and I would hope that if someone's got the uh, regular or the current Bluetooth speaker unit, that that could be paired with this as well. Don't have any confirmation on this because this unit's not officially out yet uh, to know if this actually will work with the other unit. It'd be fabulous if that would work um, because having that as a trick that you could have multiple satellite speakers would be awesome uh, for just uh, overall job site connectivity as a little trick up the sleeve. So now if you're looking at price, uh, I mentioned $119 earlier, just relative to a few other tools. Uh, that caulk gun that's coming out not too long, $129, give or take. And that spotlight may be $78, whatever. This was an image I grabbed off the Lowe's website. Uh, I want to say about two months ago, give or take, when some of the early leaks of this information started coming out. Uh, but now we obviously have confirmation about the job site radio, as well as throwing the usual caveats about typical cobalt sales promotions, discounts, so on and so forth, uh, that, you know, the 119, we'll call that a launch day price, but if you wait around long enough, I bet you could bundle this with a battery or some other kit, or maybe even get a free tool on the side or get this as a free tool. I'm not quite sure how they'll play some of those deals, but, you know, those are always in the works when it comes to the Cobalt 24-volt lineup. And so with that, thanks for watching. If you learned or enjoyed anything about this, put it down below. I want to know what your favorite feature is or any disappointments you've got about this Cobalt 24-volt job site radio. And if you like this kind of content, it helps creators like myself. If you can give, give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button down there if you haven't already done so. I've got a playlist of lots of other uh, Cobalt tool videos. Check that out. And I look forward to seeing you back here in another video. And as always, have a great day. Bye.